اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین باری الخلائق اجمعین باعث الانبیاء والمرسلین ثم الصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین شفیع المذنبین حبیب الہ العالمین ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد صلی علی محمد وعلى آل بیته الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین ولعنت اللہ على اعدائهم اجمعین من یوم عداوتهم الى یوم الدین اما بعد فقد قال اللہ عز وجل فی کتابه الحکیم وہو اصدق القائلین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا اسبرو وصابرو ورابطو واتقوا اللہ لعلکم تفلحون آمنا باللہ صدق اللہ العلی العظیم صلی علی محمد و آلی محمد السلام علیکم جمعی و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ I begin in the name of Allah the most kind, the most merciful It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala We then send our congratulatory messages to our 12th and living Imam Al-Hujjah Jalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif and to each and every one of you as we gather tonight to celebrate the birth anniversary of Sayyida Zainab bint Ali alayhim afdalu salatu was salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajahum We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we all get an opportunity to go for her ziyarat to Sham, insha'Allah, and that we receive her shafaat in the hereafter. We're going to try and do something a bit different. I'm still going to give a lecture. Don't worry, everybody. Yeah, I know you're wanting it so bad. I can tell from your faces right now. Um, but during the course of the lecture, I'm going to pose some questions. And so there's a mic in the men's side. There's a mic in the ladies' side. And so we're going to have a form of dialogue. Yeah. Um, and obviously I don't know what's happening in the ladies side so Sister Sumeya is there and you can tell me if there's anybody who has any comments or questions or if they don't so we can move on and this is probably the only time I'm going to let you interrupt me while I'm talking yeah so if you have something that you want to add uh, as I am speaking uh, you can raise your hands uh, in the ladies side you can just interrupt me um, if it goes well it goes well if it doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> you know. Uh, you don't need to email me if it doesn't go well, yeah. You don't need to email management, just deal with it, yeah. We're going to try our best to do a little bit something different to make it a little bit uh, of a conversation today, inshallah. But as I said, I will just ask some questions as we move on through the course of this lecture. The life of Sayyidina Zainab alayhi is, is one of tremendous inspiration, yeah. Uh, we, I've shared this with you on multiple occasions that I feel that the, the barakah in my life today is because I spent the years that I did in Sham learning under her dome. Um, and the many gifts that have been given to me personally by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because I pray to Him under her dome. Um, and so I have a very strong affinity for her and I'm not the only one, right? I think all of us share this personal connection with Sayyidah Zainab, whether we've been to Sham or not, but just her legacy is profound. Yeah? Her, her demonstration of different qualities throughout her life are so inspirational that we all have this attachment to her. And no matter how we look at it, right? we look at qualities such as her sabr, her patience, which we always talk about. But we also look at her firmness, you know. Um, and how she did not hesitate to stand up against those who are brutal towards them and, and the religion of Allah. Her defense and support of her brother and her family and the religion, all of these qualities that we see, they all have an original, they have an origin which they stem from. And that is her unshakable faith, her iman, right? Um, and 
the faith when it's when it has the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from it because the fact is that faith on itself is is really good right but the faith can be imperfect the faith can have areas where improvement can be made on it right the faith is not a destination i think we've talked about this before that faith is not a place where you reach and then you know the gps says you have arrived faith is not like that right faith is a continuous progression continuous improvement and so when we look at these sublime qualities that she had it's because her faith had reached the station where where these qualities came about very naturally from her very um easily from her and they and they came out in the most remarkable of manners right um and this is what I want to, what we want to discuss is what are some of these qualities that we need to make our faith strong yeah right? to make our faith vibrant and we'll look at a verse of the holy quran the verse that i read in the khutbah it comes from surah ali imran the last verse of this chapter allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu o you who believe اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون yeah that all you who believe have patience have sabr and then sabiru and help each other be patient ورابطوا and stand firm and on guard واتقوا الله and have god consciousness you have these qualities and we'll discuss each one in some detail then the result is allah says لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ That maybe then you will be successful. In other words, without these qualities, I may still be a person of faith, but my chance of success is not that great. And that's something really remarkable, isn't it? Right? Because I already am a person of faith. Right? I have this iman, I have this belief. But if that iman and that belief is not constantly strengthened, then my chance of success is not as great as it could be if my faith was strong you guys with me or no right see like we are always in dilemma you know you come later you have eaten you're tired you know you haven't eaten today you're tired yeah subhanallah like i we're trying to figure out a happy medium inshallah sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad So the verse starts with an address to believers where Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu o you who believe so my first question to you is what makes a believer a believer what makes a mu'min a mu'min I'm afraid of these dead moments here there's a hand up here because whenever it becomes quiet I have to become funny at that time, you know, and it's very difficult to be quite honest. So we'll go here, uh, Mason, right there. Salaam alaikum. Alaikum salaam, rahmatullah. Uh, I would say, uh, prayer as a result of tawhid makes one a believer. Okay, so the belief in God and then action which demonstrates that belief. Yes. Yeah, did I phrase your thoughts correctly? Yes, you did. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay, good. What else? Yeah. Uh I was going to say um submitting to that which pleases him and avoiding that which displeases him mm. and just being committed to that. Ahsan, yeah? Very good. Put it exa- exactly right. Like, right? like it's a commitment to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in doing what He wants and avoiding what He doesn't. Very good. Anybody from the sister side? We have one comment. Sure. Living your life um, the way Allah wants you to live it is all very well and good saying that. we believe in allah but especially during this time we have to show what that means good yeah exactly right like so what every what all three of these uh, these comments had was a very similar commonality to them that iman is not simply a belief right like a belief is is one component of this iman but this iman has to be backed up with action right um and i want you to remember that as just a rule right that 
our iman is not going to be judged in what's in my heart. Like in my heart, like I could say I'm a good person. In my heart, God knows my heart. My heart has these. No, like that's a component of it. But if that doesn't get translated into action, where now I am following that things which are in my heart, then my iman is incomplete, right? So what, what is important here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing believers, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. That means He's already addressing a people who have, number one, faith in Him, right? And these people also back up their faith with action. So they pray, they fast, they are committed, they do everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. But yet Allah azza wa jal then, it's like He wants more on top of that, right? And I think this is quite remarkable because he clearly must see within us potential. You know what I mean? Like the only time you ask more than, than normal is when that person has the ability to give you more than the normal, right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells us, look, iman and action is good. I can get more from you. And so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us four qualities. The first quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see in believers is when He says isbiru. Isbiru is the plural amr form, plural command form from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So is isbir would be singular, isbiru would be plural. And it's in a command form. So Allah is ordering us that I want you to be patient, right? from sabr, I need patience from you. Now, patience in this particular context does not have, it comes in an unrestricted form. So for example, sometimes God would say, be patient against um, illness. Yeah? Be patient against starvation. Be patient. And so there is a particular command with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be patient with. But when there is without any restriction, God wants patience at all times. Right? So one of the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us is this unfiltered, continuous, and consistent patience. Now patience in Islam is generally broken up into three categories that you have to be patient in this and in that and in that. What are these three categories? Yeah, here. Um, uh, patience uh, in obeying Allah in the do's. Okay. Uh, patience uh, uh, in those things uh, where you have uh, against the haram, an al masiyah and patience against the afflictions of Allah. Excellent, yeah? These three areas are the all-encompassing areas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be patient in. Any other specific example would fall under these things. Al-sabru in the ma'asiyah. Yeah, sabr when it comes to disobeying God. I'm patient, I won't disobey God. Yeah? Al-sabru ala ta'a. That's sabr when it comes to obedience to God. So whatever God wants, I'm going to be patient and do it, even though I may not feel like it, right? We all know waking up for Fajr in the summer, a lot of patience, right? It takes a lot of commitment to wake up to God. Fasting during the summer, it takes a lot of commitment. It requires within us to say, I'm going to fight my desires and do what God wants. And the third is, a sabru indal musiba. That whenever there is a type of difficulty, affliction, hardship, Allah says, be patient. Now when it comes to these three categories, that is again, obedience, disobedience, and hardships, let's take a poll. Which one do you think is considered to be the most difficult? Okay, so we'll take a show of hands. Uh, Sumeya, you keep track of who is raising the hands and which one has the most hands. So who thinks that patience in obedience to God is the most difficult? Ah, not a single person. Yeah? Y'all are amazing, mashallah. Yeah? Anybody raise their hands in the lady side? No. Yeah? So there's only three options. The options are uh, so the options are obedience in obedience, in disobedience, or in difficulties. Ma uh, ma musiba, right? So a few people said that when it comes to obedience to God, it's the most difficult. 
but hardly anyone. Who thinks that being patient in acts of disobedience to God is the most difficult? So I have a handful of people who believe that in disobedience, so like to be able to control one's desires, right? And not do what God wants. A few people think that that's, is there, do we see more on the lady's side? Uh, no. No? And so the last one, you better show your hands, yeah? Get active a little bit. Sabru indal ma'asi, indal musiba, yeah? That in times of hardships and difficulties, right? So that's more. Is there, you have more on the lady's side? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, good. Okay. The hadith tell us that the most difficult area to be patient in is when it comes to protecting ourselves from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one. Yeah. As-sabru indal ma'asiya. That when we are faced with difficulties, when we are faced with desires, that moment of patience is more difficult than patience in any other time. Quite interesting, right? Now why? Why do you think that is? Yeah? You have the mic right here, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anybody else want to talk? Nazis and I can just have a conversation, yeah? Yeah? Please, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Is the mic on? Just turn it on so that I don't have to repeat anything. Uh, I was going to say that in... In the third one, when with like test, a person doesn't have a choice but to go mm. through it. Yeah, you have no choice. But in the second one, it's very easy if somebody says something bad to you to, you know, out of anger say it back to them. Mm. But it takes a lot of restraint not to do that, out of respect for, you know. Very good. So that's why I would think the second. Yeah, one. excellent, excellent explanation. Anybody want to add something to that? Sometimes you know I don't even have to be here. You know, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Brother Jawad has his hand up in the back. Yeah? Anybody in the lady side, Sumaya? No, not. No? Okay. So I think it's like the second one is like the battle of your nafs as well, too. Because you are fighting your inner desires, and I think that's what it is. Yeah, so like it's a, this is this inner fight, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I think the way it was explained is, is exactly right. Yeah, that. When it comes to musibah, we generally look at that as being hard. It's hard to lose a loved one. It's hard to be sick. It's hard to, be, to lose a job, right? Like these are musibah. We see Allah explain musibah as hunger and death and loss of children and loss of income. And if any one of us goes through that, you have sleepless nights, right? Like you have a lot of tension. But at the end of the day, what are you going to do? There's no choice, right? But when it comes to acts of disobedience, you have a choice. You can engage in that act of disobedience. Yeah? You can allow these temptations to run over us. And I think, you know, what? the reason also is why this area is more difficult is because temptations don't <laughs> stop. Yeah? They are consistently attacking us. You know what I mean? So like a musiba will come to an end eventually. It will. It will pass. The illness will pass. The loss of a loved one will, will leave a little bit. It'll still hurt, but it'll leave a little bit. But temptations, every day, if I'm weak, that temptation will come to my door. Right? And not only will the temptations be constant, but subhanAllah, as time progresses, they keep changing on us. Yeah? So today, this thing was something that tempted me. Tomorrow, something else could tempt me. The day after, something else could tempt me. And so my, the necessity of being on guard at all times is really high, right? Now, when you look at these three areas, it's something quite interesting, right? That in each one of these areas, a different form of patience is required to be successful. Right? So for example, you look at patience in hardships. What is expected is that my patience should yield contentment and composure. Yeah? So internally, when I go through difficulties, the expectation is, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to turn that, that internal grief towards understanding. So, so patience at that time is an internal composure. 
Yeah? That I don't allow words to come up regret and say, I wish, I wish I hadn't said that, for example. I wish I hadn't complained to Allah about that the way I did, for example. I wish I didn't question God's mercy the way that I did. And so it's an internal composure at that particular moment. While patience, when it comes to obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that patience necessitates action. Right? So Allah says, be patient and do this. So now my patience is not only in accepting what God wants me to do, but that patience drives action. So, okay, now I have to act, and I have to wake up, and I have to do this, and I have to do what God wants. While as sabru al al when it comes to um, disobedience, it's a patience of non-action. Yeah? So like, I know that these things are available to me, but my sabr, requires that I don't act. And so like, what you understand is that sabr is, patience is something that has many tentacles, right? Sabr sometimes necessitates that I am calm. Sabr at other times necessitates that I act. And sabr at other times necessitates that I don't act. And so sabr is not just this one uh, cookie cutter experience that can be placed in every situation. Rather, every situation may require a different way of being patient. You understand? And so sabr is something that is this internal compass that is constantly linked to God that any time I, I, I am faced with one of these three things which we are constantly faced with, I come back with the right type of patience which will either then make me act or not act but be calm either way inside. We will follow or no? Yeah? Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The second quality God says that believers require is, He says, wasabiru. Yeah? From Bab al Mufa'ala. Mufa'ala, like the Bab of Mufa'ala basically means. That it's not just a, a singular being who's doing it, like the person has sabr, but sabiru. That means we are sharing in the experience of patience. Right? So here the meaning is that we help each other in being patient. Right? So subhanAllah, it's quite interesting. So the first quality that Allah expects in the believer is very personal. I have to be patient. Patient here, patient in this, patient in that. The second quality is that I have to help, each, we have to help each other be patient. Yeah? SubhanAllah. Isn't that quite interesting of what God expects from us, right? That even though my hisab is personal, the way my hisab will be done is how I worked with creation and how I carried out my affairs with creation. There's a comment back there. Where is Mason? I don't see Ali. Assalamu alaikum. Ah, you're good, Mason. Alaykum. So I was going to say, it's also harder to fight your own nafs because you're doing it by yourself. As you just said, when we give each other patience, like the trials with Palestine, for instance, we're all helping each other have sabr, but it's much harder to do it on your own. Very good. Yeah, very nice point, right? Where, you know, like that, that what he just mentioned is... Uh, is a, is the way God comforts us. So, for example, when we look at the verse of fasting, Ya yuhaladina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam. God says that, oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you. And so, right away, you're like, oh, I have to fast. But then immediately he says, kama kutiba alaladina min the way others were also asked to fast, almost to tell us right away that, hey, you're not in this alone. You're going to be doing it together. Others have done it with you, right? And so imagine that if that loss, and this is why when you look at it from a communal perspective, this is why we're told attend funerals, right? So that the person is not suffering alone, right? This is why we're told attend Jum'a. Why? So that we can see who needs an uplifting hand, for example. Visit the sick. Why? So that no one is alone in this journey. In Islam, Allah is always instructing us to uplift each other in this journey, right? So the idea of collective patience. So my question to you then is that how, what are some ways in which we can collectively support one another? 
How can we help each other be patient? This is my question to you. Yeah. Um, right there, Kashif. Asalaamu Alaikum. Alaikum Asalaam. Maybe by advising each other or being a role model when you're doing sabr yourself, you're showing others to be patient as well. Right. So that when you, right, so when you interact with one another, there is this selflessness that I have, right? Like, you know, like sometimes, like when people need something from us, I really may not feel like doing it, right? But I have to get over my own um, issues to help somebody else, right? So very good. So we help each other by giving good advice and being a form of comfort for each other. Very good. Anybody else from the ladies' side? Uh, being there for each other, um, letting letting people know you're not alone. Sometimes we ask people, how are you doing? And your automatic response is, I'm fine. But being telling people, telling your community, telling your friends you're there, and you can tell me if you're feeling down. And we can then collectively help each other through it and just lend a helping hand. Very good, yeah. That is like a balance that like I, I, I want to encourage in our community, you know, and and the balance is that sometimes like we don't want to tell others when we're going when we're sick, for example. Like as if it's an abe. It's not an abe, you know? As if it's something not worth sharing. Um, we have to rise above that in some ways. Where we're not we're not posting it on social media, you know what I mean? But your akriba, like your close circle friends, and even those who you know, your, their du'as can be helpful. It's a balancing act. I'm still trying to figure out how to, how, to, how to discuss that. But you know what I mean? Like sometimes we get very private and we suffer alone when, when we don't have to suffer alone. We don't have to pod, um, broadcast it. But at the same time, if we were also strong with each other when it came to being connected then we would also know when there is right when there is a problem to serve but that's something else that's a good point i think zahid had a point right in front of you right in front of you miss um, so this is something that, that marum said used to say quite a lot um at the beginning of muharram right that you get people coming in that usually don't come in um, and not to have like that judgment towards them. And I think that sometimes that happens, uh, whether it's uh, on purpose or without uh, intention, that there's that judgment factor that's there for some trials or situations that people go through. So I think that's one thing we can definitely work on. Um, and another thing would just be in general, like we don't know what everybody's going through, right? So just in our du'as and stuff like that, just ask mm. to help not just the community, but like the, the Muslim ummah and stuff in general. Very good, yeah, very good. Uh, Nabil had his hand up. Just on the previous point about, uh, you know, talking to your community, sharing your problems, of course, without getting to the point of complaining and things like right, that. Right, right, right. Um, I think part of that is also like when you go through something, whether it's a physical ailment or something and, you know, you're, you're, you're down or whatever it is, sometimes people have this uh, concept that I'm the only one going through this. I'm mm. the only one who's having a bad day. I don't want to bring other people down. Uh, but little do you know that, you know, uh, in Alin yeah. Sanaki Kebeth, right? I mean, everybody is going to, everybody is going through some kind of right, difficulty right. regardless. And so for you to assume that you're the only person who's having a or, you know, not today, but the only person generally who has bad days right. is kind of incorrect. Yeah, very good. Yeah, very good. Um, <coughs> let's take one more comment and then, yeah, yeah there's a comment. The if there's a comment on there, let's take it there. Um, I see I'm getting like angry stares from people already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take my time. Yeah. Uh, ladies side, please. Um, sometimes when we talk to others uh, when they're going through something or when we're going through something, maybe uh, reminding them of the Ahlul Bayt and their struggles kind of uh, keeps us grounded, knowing that they've been through everything. They've, there's nothing that they haven't experienced that we're experiencing now. So sometimes maybe just remembering them. Yeah, good. 
Yeah. So a lot of things here have been mentioned are really good. Yeah. So we, in one way, I would, I think I would summarize it in this way, that we serve as backbones for each other. That's how we we bring about community patience or community. Like in any way that I can try to uplift and better the life of somebody else, I should. Right. And so that is maybe making dua for them because I don't know what they're going through or just calling each other, finding out what's happening, reminding them of the Ahlul Bayt and their struggles and what they went through, reminding them that they're not alone. This is like one way in which we just continuously try and uplift one another. That's the quality of a believer. Right. A believer should always be one whose belief rubs off on other people. Right? And that's what God wants, that our belief becomes community strong at the end of that. Right? The second point that I think I would just highlight really quick is that one way that I can also strengthen patience in a community way um, is to avoid doing those things which is, baking, which is breaking the backbone of my community. You understand? Like, so sometimes like, I may be such a divisive force in the community. I argue too much, I fight too much, I complain too much, I do all of these things. And all that does is that it weakens the spirits of people, right? It weakens the iman of people, it weakens the community that people have. And so as a person, not only am I to be strengthening, I'm also to be leaving those things which are breaking my community apart. Right? And so that's another way that, that is an example of this Sabiru. So the second is Sabiru. The third quality, it falls under the same type of verb, Warabitu, yeah? from Rabat. Rabat means like to tie a knot, right? to tie something very firm. And so Rabitu is that we help each other stand firm. Right? So we are in a way like these backbones for each other but we are lifting each other up right and when you look at the the tafsir of this is that believers should find a way to always be united with each other right always be united with each other and united with each other in particular against common enemies right and when we talk about common enemies what is that right so that could be it could be ideologies that is a common enemy to all of us Right? It could be temptations, it could be desires, it could be enemy forces, sure, right? But more than enemy forces, when's the last time we saw an enemy force walking down the street, right? But we're talking about these enemy forces that every day are trying to break my iman, right? So shaitan is a common enemy, temptations are a common enemy, desires are a common enemy. And so we as believers are supposed to be united in fighting these common enemies. So a question that I want to ask you is that how, what are some examples that we can stand, f that we can give that will display standing firm against enemies? I didn't phrase that question well at all. Let me try that again. Yeah. How can we stand firm together against common enemies? You follow or no? Yeah? It's like there's five people in this mud list. You know, there's like two people in the lady's side, five in the men's side. Um, After this, I want to hear from some other people. Please. Yeah. I, I think the first thing itself is this understanding what, what the, the requirements uh, are in the religion, right? Like there's certain oppressions against certain groups that aren't really oppression, right? Like when we... Um, I don't, I don't want to say too much on that just in case. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, like w when we see, for example, like people being oppressed overseas, like due to another country, et cetera, that's something to stand up against. But for people living a lifestyle that's not Islamic, that's something that we have to understand that, um, that you know, that's not something we can stand firm against. So I think the first requirement itself is understanding what Islam wants out of us. And Excellent. So educating firm. ourselves, yeah. right? So as a community, we need to be educated on those things which we are supposed to stand firm for or not even stand for, right? And sometimes we maybe are not that well versed about these issues. So that's one. Very good. Uh, Brother Wahid here, please, right here. I think creating a line of communication between the community to make sure everyone is communicating, that's a huge yeah, thing. So we stand united by 
having discussions with each other, right? By building bonds with each other. Very good. We help each other through that. In the back there, I don't know your name. Sorry, brother. Salam. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Uh, another common thing that we uh, experience in our daily interaction is disassociating ourselves from uh, evils like riba. Uh, it takes two to tango. So uh, if somebody else is coming Very up good. to me and uh, speaking ill of somebody else, I can just simply uh, walk away from that discussion, change the subject, or do very anything good. that doesn't encourage them from having such a conversation again. Ahsan, that's a very good point, right? Sometimes we have to help each other not to sin. We may not even know we're sinning. We're just talking about somebody. We'll be like, hey, let's not do, let's not talk about somebody, right? You know, sometimes like we un, like we un, uh, intentionally. Like when we're saying like, you know, oh, this person told me this, what we'll do is we'll change our voice to mimic that person. You know, yeah, you know, he said, and then we'll change our voice because that person sounds like, don't do that. Like if you're that other person, be like, hey, don't imitate them, right? Just help each other because we're not doing, we're not bad people. We're not doing things maliciously. But sometimes we just need the help of each other to not sin. Yeah, very good. Anybody else? We've got two comments on the list. Good, side. alhamdulillah. <laughs> Like encourage people to get up and do it again. Like to like never give up. Yeah. So if somebody did something good, we encourage that type of action from that person again and from others. Very good. Anybody? There's another comment. I think on an individual level, um, we look at things from a bird's eye perspective. Uh, the more we zoom out, we realize we have a common goal, and that is gaining nearness to Allah. So it helps us pull other members of the community up instead of pulling them down. Very good. Yeah, we look at it as a communal mission, right? That how can we assist each other? And so sometimes when we have that, that long vision, like petty differences become pointless. Right? And so we begin to just ignore these superficial things that we spend time on to focus on the grander scheme, right? We'll take one more comment here. There's, uh, there's two comments here. And if they, we'll take one or two more from the ladies and then we'll move on. Good. Uh, I just wanted to add one thing that I think is uh, a conclusion to a lot of what was already said. Yes. Like a, an end point to it. And that is... Um, to reaffirm uh, each other and to remind one another that the best incentive, I think, to refrain from doing those things and to avoid, uh, you know, um, uh, having a negative impact on the ummah is to just remind each other that we have a living imam in this world mm, right very now. Very good. And Ascent. that strengthening that um, awareness of each other I think is the is the best thing to, to yeah we motivation. sometimes forget our Imam is watching us right and so we have to stand firm for each other for the Imam very good you had a comment yeah uh, yeah sorry quickly so uh, there's the saying that we're brothers and faiths uh, brothers and sisters in faith and then equals in humanity so upholding that uh, the, the fact that we're brothers and sisters so you know one action Ascent. whether good or bad you know, it, it's counted for all the family, for all the brothers and sisters. So, Ascent. so always Very try good. to, you know, yeah. if you're doing bad, you're hurting everybody. If you're doing good. Excellent point. Also. Yeah, excellent Thank point. You. Anybody in the lady side? I will take uh, Mason. There's a, all the way back in the chair, as we affectionately call it, the departure lounges. Yeah. <laughs> Any, before you go, Abu Yusuf, one second. Anybody in the lady side? Uh, no. No, okay, good. Father. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. I think we should, as a community, exercise Amr bil Ma'ruf or Nahyan al Munkar. I think if we, we should, if we see something wrong, then we should try to prevent it by giving advice. And if it's something good, then we should also encourage others to do it also. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe we've, we've. We're sometimes shy to fulfill that obligation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And this is one of our, what you call, uh, the principle that we all have to do it. Amr al-Ba'ruf and Nail Munkar. Ahsant. Yeah? Ahsant. You have a comment? Yeah? Is it going to knock my socks off? Yeah? I'm sure it will. Right in the front, miss. Yeah? Right. Raise your hand so he brings you the mic. Raise your hand. Raise your hand.
So, like, someone, like, is getting bullied or something, like, help them out. So, like, the angel on your shoulders are going to, like, write something. G like, there's two angels on your shoulder. Like, one of them is going to write sins, and one of them are going to write what well, good things are you doing. Like, help people out, and then one of the angels on your shoulders, like, help then like they write them in a like a notebook then then after in the day of judgment then they hand it to Allah then then right then they discuss how wh how much sins and how much good things you did so then then h that's how that's how the that's how you go to jahannam or ja jannah Ascent, yeah so when somebody is being treated badly or bullied Right, like we stand up. So I, I want to summarize it and then and then go to this last quality. Right, and the last quality, I'll just discuss myself. And that is that look when we talk about rabitu, standing firm against a common enemy, it requires us to first and foremost be constantly on guard. Yeah, like we sometimes as believers get get complacent. Right, we'll be like we live here, we send our kids here. If they're if something they are tempted with this is no we can do better right we can create more structures to safeguard against those things which are affecting our children for example we may not be we may not be able to protect them fully but we better be creating alternate information and alternate protections to safeguard them from the diseases that are out there you follow or no Right, so it's like if I go and I'm traveling to Asia or anywhere, I take Dukarol. Yeah, why? As a protection, right? Like I'll take it. Like I don't know what's gonna happen. It doesn't mean that that place is bad, right? But I'm gonna take the necessary protection to protect myself in case something happens to me. We have to be on guard, right? I think we sometimes let our guard down. We have to know who our enemies are. What temptations are going to destroy our faith? And then try to create the right tools to be um, assisting in that. So that's the third quality, Rabitu. The fourth quality that Allah says is, Wattakullah. Be mindful of Allah. This is the glue that I think holds all of these together. right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be patient. And so while I am patient and being mindful of Allah <coughs> in my desire to be patient, I have to ensure that I don't allow my patience to make me into a coward, for example. So I'm mindful of what God wants. Yeah? I don't allow my patience to make me too timid where I don't say something that needs to be said. And so I need to be mindful of what God wants. Allah says, help each other be patient. <coughs> in my desire to be mindful, of, or in my desire to help each other be patient, I have to be mindful that I can't transgress my relationships with each other. Right? So when I, when I address or help you in trying to be patient, I do it in a manner that's not going to break your spirit. You know? I, I can handle criticism. Maybe you can handle criticism the way I can handle criticism. And so I have to approach you with a little bit softness. Somebody else maybe can handle it. <coughs> and so I will approach them slightly differently. So be mindful of Allah. And in that mindfulness, I will know how to act in each situation. The last point, be rabitu. Allah says, be firm. In my, in my being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and my desire to be, for example, adaptive to the environment that we live in, my, my taqwa should, should guide me so that I don't do, for example, bid'ah, for example. I want to be adaptive, so let's create something brand new that will help. No, there has to be a structure of that mindfulness of Allah, right? These four qualities is what Allah expects from a believer. Yeah? Patience, help each other in be patient, um, stand firm with each other, and be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason I chose this verse is that when we look at the life of Sayyidah Zainab, she embodied all four of these qualities. Yeah? She was patient. Who can argue her patience? But not only was she patient, she helped others be patient. Yeah? That on that day of Ashura, I meant she was that backbone. You know, when we are told that 
Some narrations say that before Ali Akbar, before Imam Hussein reaches Ali ibn al-Akbar, Zainab found her way to Ali ibn al-Akbar. Because she knew that Hussein would be heartbroken. So she was there just to deliver patience to Imam al Hussein. She helped him be patient. She was firm against enemies. Look at what she did against Ibn Ziyad. Look at how she stood up against Yazid. Yeah? And she had, in all of that, she never forgot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because she had all four of these qualities, the result that God said was available to her. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you will be successful. And who is more successful than Zainab today? Yeah? Where we remember her in this light and follow her as our role model. We pray to Allah that if we can adopt these qualities, that inshallah on the day of judgment we can be considered as being a companion of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. <clears throat> Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the return of our Imam We ask him to forgive the sins of our parents and loved ones <coughs> For those who are going through difficulty That he end their difficulty For those that have asked us to remember them Ya Allah accept their hajat Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ كَرَأَ سُورَةِ الْمُبَارَكَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ مَسْبُوقَةً بِالصَّلَاةِ عَلَى مُحَمَّدِ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدِ